and good day. This is Dr. George Answer from Faith International Church. I'm just excited to see that today you have joined us in our online experience right here at Faith International Church. The word of God is coming. It is able to change, heal, deliver, and I know God has a word for you. As well, I want you to take a moment to like and subscribe and share this video as it will be a blessing to someone. Thank you so much for joining us today and God bless you. In Psalm 29, in Psalm 29, reading from the verse 23, we can start from even the verse 1. Let's go with Psalm 29 and then let's read something. Psalm, the book of Psalm 29. The Bible says it's dealing with the voice of the Lord. And when you start with, I will read with the verse 24 as they get ready. But if you can start on the screens with, from verse 1. In the verse, on the verse 4, it says that the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. And then they continue to say that the voice of the Lord is majestic. Now hear this. The voice of the Lord is power. Can you start me with one, please? The voice of the Lord. It says, ascribe to the Lord, O sons of the mighty, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. It says, that give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holy name or holy array. Move on. Praise God. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of God. It says that the God of glory thunders. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is upon many what? Waters. Look at the next verse. It says that the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. And I want to end there today. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is what? Majestic. Now, the word majestic is coming from the word majesty, which is used to describe kings and, and, and people in authority. And so anytime the voice of God is decreed or it's established in a place, expect the rulership of God. Amen. Expect the rulership of what? Of God. Today I declare that the voice of God will supersede any other voice in your life. Say amen. I want you to work with me. Amen. Tell your neighbor, work with pastor today. I said, the voice of the Lord will thunder in your life in the name of Jesus. Declare amen. amen. And so when we talk about voices, we are dealing with the three major voices. And we are talking about the voice of God. And now we see that the voice of God, it thunders. It is majestic. It rules over everything. The voice of God is what we need. The voice of God is what will change our lives. The voice of God is what will heal, deliver, and set free. It is the voice of God that will bring salvation. It is the voice of God that will bring you that deliverance and breakthrough you're looking for. The voice of God. And then there is the voice, demonic voices. Now, demonic voices, of course, the Bible is saying that the devil came to steal, kill, and to destroy. And so, in the voice of God, those are the things you will hear. You will hear killing, you will hear stealing, and you will hear destroying. It is the voice of the devil that brings that. And then, of course, you have human voices. You have human voices, and we will deal with all of them in depth, in depth. And so I'm going to ask Mikey, I'm going to ask today, I'm going to use blessing. Blessing, come. You and I today, and then Mikey and you. So come. Three people I'm going to use today. Are we excited? Amen. Please uh, clap for them so that they don't pass out. <laughs> and so blessing is the lady, so in the middle. Praise God. Now. I want you to give me some space a little bit. And then let me see. Who, who is going to be my next one? Since, um, who is going to be the next one? I'll take one. You pick one. Brother Reggie, come. <laughs> yes. So I want you to see Brother Reggie is born again, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Please stay in front of the three of them for me. So right in front there. So, and then face there for me, please. Yes. So, 
Brother Reggie is saved, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, sanctified, anointed. The glory of God is on him. And now he is born again, but because he lives on earth, he has to deal with voices. Are you getting what I'm saying? He loves God, but he has to deal with what? Voices. And in the realms of this earth, the voice you pay more attention to is the voice that becomes more dominant in your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? So whatever voice you pay more attention to, you will be more dominant in that area. And so understand, she is the human voice. Who is she? Talk to me. Are we, we doing a, it's a teaching, so hear me. Look, you can look at here. Who is she? All right. And then this man here is the voice of God. Wow. Now, this young man here is anointed, but today we are using him as the voice of the devil. Please don't go and say, I said he's a devil. He's not a devil. He loves God. The spirit of the Lord is upon him. Amen. 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 Are you there? Yes. yes, you love God, right? Praise God. So he loves God, he said. So, Brother Reggie, it's a child of God who loves God, goes to church, is anointed, loves singing, loves worship, is a giver. He does everything that we are talking about as a believer. But every day, he has to fight with these three voices. Every day of his life. The human voice is telling him he's not good enough. He's not anointed. He thinks he's forgiven. He thinks God loves him. Who does he think he is? He's not going to lose his job. The guy that he meets in his workplace, he is taking his position. That is the human voice. The human voice contend with the insecurity of your life. The insecure, the every part of you that a fight. That human voice will forever fight you no matter how anointed you are. Wow, say wow. wow. So you will be dealing with human voices now, of course, when we deal with human voices, it comes in many ways. It comes from your parents. You deal with the voice of your parents. How many of you know you deal with the voice of your parents? You, you will become, one way or the other, affected by the voice of your parents. What is you if you have parents that are insecure? They will use you as an experiment in their insecurity. Yes. They will insult you. They will put you down. They will make you feel like you are nobody. But, but, but that is not true. It is out of their frustration words comes out of their mouth. Amen. Because out of the abundance of their heart, their mouth. Talk to me. Out of the abundance of their heart, their mouth. And so the voice of human will flow through all these things. Friends. Mentors, spouses. Are you getting what I'm saying? You know, when I was preparing, one of the voices when it comes to human was what I talked about last week when I used the voice of Nabal and the voice of Abigail. But one of the voices the Holy Ghost brought to my attention in the book of Job was the wife of Job. Remember, in Nabal, it was the man that was not wise. The man said, was, was ready to say to David anything and he was going to lose his life. But when it comes to Job, the wife told Job, curse God and, you know, Loretta, you know what shocked me? The lady said, why don't you curse God and you die? I thought the two had become one. I thought she was going to say, why don't you curse God and we die? <laughs> no, she didn't say that. She, she was smart because inheritance was going to be for her. That lady was smart. I'm telling you, she was smart. She said, Job, what you are going through, curse God and you die. Me, I will put on a makeup. I will find me a knife, handsome man. Whilst you are gone, me and him will be chilling in your house, on your horse. We don't think there was Lamborghini. So his horse, his camel, <laughs> everything you and I, you have worked for, you curse God and die. Human voice. Human voice. People of God, be careful the voice you are hearing. Some of you, there are some voices you are hearing. It's not good for you. You were doing well until you found a friend. 
And I'm saying, Pastor Harriet, if this is a friend, then how can you imagine when the enemy shows up? If a friend can take you from God, people of God, they are not a friend. Oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear what I said. I said, if a friend can lure you from the hand of God, you have a good enemy. An enemy that has disguised himself. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of God. That's the friend I'm looking for. That is David talking. I was glad when they said. So David had good friends. That is where he could write Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the uncle. David understood the power of friendship and the voice of what the friends can do. And so Brother Reggie here, a man of God, loves God, but daily is engaging the voice of man, human voices. And you see, you live on earth, so you cannot run away from human voices. They're your bosses, your colleagues, your friends, your enemies, and then one of my mentors call it frenemies. So frenemies are friends that are enemies. We don't know. <laughs> Amen. You don't know. On the outside, they are good with you, but on the inside, they are cutting you. So they are the frenemies. So they are your friends and enemies together. Praise God. May God deliver you from frenemies. Because those are serious. Those are the ones you never know. The next you know, they, they bring you, you did this, and you say, how? I said, yeah, that guy. Job was a frenemy. No, jo Judas. He, he was in the camp. He was part of them. But by the time he showed up, the real him showed up. Everyone was shocked. The man of God is hearing human voices. I pray that God is sending you people that will challenge you, people that will mentor you, people that are, will love you, people that will turn you to the next level, people that will challenge you to your next, that the friends and human voices you are hearing, God is helping you. The other thing I'm also praying that God will give you the capacity not to take in everything that people tell you. For some of you, you don't have the backbone to say, thank you, you said it, but you know what? It hits and it falls. A, 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 I know there are many arrows and voices that is coming as arrows, but as it hit my life, it falls down. I'm not, you know, receiving everything. The voice. And then, of course, the voice of God. What is the voice of God? You will make it. This day have I begotten you. You are my son. You are my child. I love you with an eternal love. You would do, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ever ask or think of. The blessings of the Lord is on you. I will use you. I will anoint you. I will make greatness out of you. My promises for you are yea and amen. And so the voice of God reminds you of the promises of God. The voice of God comes through the logos and the rhema. The Logos is the written word, which is the promises of God. The promises of God is in the word of God. It is for your today, your tomorrow, and your future. That is the Logos. It is written, and what is written is written. It is yea and amen. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able to pierce through. It is able to deliver. It is able to set free. It is the work and the voice of God through the Logos. What is the rhema? It comes through the rhema. What you are hearing right now is what you need now. That is the voice of God. So the voice of God comes through the rhema, the inspired word of God. What is written that God breathes on, that meets your need now. And so when you need God to speak to you, what you need is a rhema. That is why never play with the presence of God. Don't be in the house of God and go home the same. Because in the presence of God, you can receive whatever you are looking for in the name of of Jesus, there is the rhema and there is the logos. The voice of God comes through those two dimensions. And then, Mr. S. A. Tan, Satan. <laughs> so he operates 
through accusation. Talk to me. He operates through what? Accusation. But I heard in Revelation that the accuser of the brethren has been cast down. But guess what, Elder Ken? He goes, even though he's cast down, he goes to and fro. So I'm coming down, am I good? So he goes to and fro. So he's anointed. So when the voice of God speaks, my son, when he's going here, then he's come to and fro. So then he will, he will mess with him. Then the voice of the human. Then the voice of God. Then the voice of the human. Then the voice of... So every day, every day, anointed by man of God, going through so much. And that is why people of God, your quiet time is necessary. You may ask me a question. What is quiet time? Waking up and the first thing you are interested in is spending that short time with God. And I remember I shared it in one of the Sundays, one of the Wednesdays that use the system called soap where you read the scripture, you write down your observation, you write down your application, and then you pray. Anytime you read the scripture, you write down the scripture, your observation, the application in that scripture, and then the prayer point. And that becomes your quiet time. So man of God, you are leaving your house with an application of God's word. You are leaving the house with an obse- something you have observed from God. Hallelujah. And so when the enemy comes like a flood, the spirit of God, where did the spirit of God came from? The word of God that is ignited in you. Then, man of God, this is what happened. Then the word of God raises a standard. Because the standard cannot be done by this one. No, he's an accuser. What he's doing is not true. But because he operates, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. So he operates in two ways, deception and accusation. Deception and what? Accusation. So if he cannot deceive you, he will accuse you. And when you want to hear the truth, then he will deceive you. If you refuse to hear the truth, then he will accuse you. You thought you are who you say you are. So just because you prayed for that person and they were healed, you think you are anointed? Come on. Remember what you did two nights ago? I was there. I saw you. <laughs> I did what? I saw you. I was on the phone with you. You were the one that said this and this to that guy. Didn't you say it? Then some of you, you are sitting there and then you are thinking. And the voices of your mind, human voices, is killing you. Because, hear this, there are something that happens, man of God. This here loves to partner with this. The devil, Satan likes to partner with the human voice. That is why, please, when people do things to you, don't be quick to lash them. It is what is behind what they are doing. Amen. That's why the more you spend time with God, when they come to you, you will do like Jesus Forgive them, for they know not. It took me years to teach Pastor Harriet. You know, Pastor Harriet, it's a discipline. She's like A, B, C, D. She just like that. And I, I used to share with her, woman of God, if they know better, they will do better. Pastor, my, my, they know better. They did it. They, <laughs> I said, no, they don't know better. Trust me. Even if they know better, they've not matured to know better yet. Give them time. Says, ah, but this one they did it on purpose. Look, I said no. They, and then when God began to now do that in her, so now when people do this, you come to say, oh, let them go. They don't know better. I say, hey. <laughs> Amen. But but you see, it takes time. The voice of God is speaking. The voice of the enemy is speaking, and the voice of humans are speaking. And each one wants a piece of this man's walk with God. Now, how do you move forward? Whichever voice is louder will have dominion in your life. Whichever voice. So if he is going to walk with God in truth and in spirit, Elder Ken, his interaction with the voice of God will have to be more. Amen. It doesn't mean that these ones will leave him, but he will carry maturity. 
to the point that when these voices come, man of God, you will have the voice of God to defeat them. Look at the, on the cross. All Jesus said to the voices was, it is. Yeah. Because he had the voice of God. Now before he would say it is finished, he would say it is written. Do you get it? You have to say it is written first. Because without it is written many times to contend with the voice that is coming, you will give up. And when he give up, he cannot say it is finished. God has a purpose for you. Amen. But these voices will contend with you. And your way out is with it is written. And that means your time in the presence of God. Hearing the voice of God. Let me tell you something I said with the first service. Please, don't let this service be the last time you hear this sermon. Anytime you come to church, don't hear the word once. I remember growing up, we used to buy tapes and buy CDs. How many of you remember CDs? Yeah. What about VHS? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Now you don't need to buy anymore. You can go to faith. my faith I see at YouTube, and you can listen to the word, and listen to it over, and over, and over, and guess what it does, man of God, it does something on the inside, so when the enemy comes like a flood, watch this, the purpose of the enemy is to come like a flood, what is the purpose of a flood, to sweep you, do you get it, the purpose of a flood is to do what, sweep you, but it says that the only way out of flagery is that the spirit of God must raise a standard. People of God, when there is a flood, you realize that what people usually look for is to find a higher thing yes. that is stable. Yes. Are you getting it? So, so when there is a flood, you know, I'm going to do something. I'm going to step on this. Am I good? Yes. So let's say the flood is going here. So what am I going to do? Hear this. I just raise it. I'm, I, I feel short now. <laughs> feel very short. <laughs> I feel very short. Wow. Hello, Sammy. What is this? I like, I like it this way. Uh -huh. See, I <laughs> Give Jesus praise. Let's appreciate them. <laughs> I didn't want to feel short, people of God. <laughs> so I would rather go down or come down. But, but these voices, are, I think if all we can take home today is the practical lesson of these three voices, it will help us. But the Lord sent me here today with another voice that we need to deal with. And in dealing with these voices, we will realize that we have to mature in the word. We have to mature in the word. So the voice of the Lord is powerful. We dealt with something like the voice of our experiences. Um, and the voice of our experiences are very, very important. And when it comes to the voice of the spirit, the voice of God, it, it, the, the, there is that three things that we dealt with that we're going to need to work with. Of course, that satanic voice, human voice, and then the, the, the voice of God. In these voices, it also, woman of God operates as a spirit, right? So we have human spirit, the spirit of God, and then we have demonic spirit. And it is important we take care and we make, we, we, we build ourselves in this arena so that we don't get sidetracked. Are you hearing it? In this generation, we have many voices. We have voices of opportunities that is, the, you know, making people run away from God. It is an opportunity but if there is no spirit or if the spirit of God is not enlightened, you will pick the wrong opportunity. Amen. Pastor, why is it opportunity but it is wrong? There are some things that may look good. There's a way that seems right in the sight of man. But the end of it is what? Destruction. And so the opportunities that comes our way also comes as a voice. Take me, take me, take me, take me. I always tell young people that are about to marry, it is important that you have trained yourself to know the voice of God. Because you see, when you fall in love, you don't think straight. Oh, yes. I'm telling you. But someone will say, Pastor, try me. I'm telling you. 
I've, I've worked with people so much that, and so I always tell the elder Ken, I always tell people, if you fall in love already, please don't come and talk to me, what do you think? Because you're putting me in a place where when I tell you truth, you will say the man doesn't like me. Yes. I always tell people, young people, people of God, hear me, those of you that are here, when you find the man or find the woman, before you fall in love, talk to me. Because remember, I, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I have a wife already. Amen. 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 You're not sharing amen. I said amen. amen. So I can tell you truth. I can tell you the mind of God. But you see, after your heart is in it already, when you come and I tell you truth, say, you pastor, you have yours already, so you, you don't think about us. <laughs> you, you don't know what I hear. You don't know what I hear in my office. So you pastor, you know, you always, you know, Canada is cold. And you, and you always go home with <laughs> someone, but you think we, <laughs> I said to myself, but you see, it is important we make decisions based on the spirit of God. But that is why it is important you cultivate the spirit of God in you. In the book of Job, it says, therefore, there is a spirit in man. The breath of God that gives him illumination. If that spirit that is in you is not lighted, your decisions are affected. Because that spirit also has a voice. And it will affect what you make. Do you know there are people, there is just a, they, every decision they make, it brings pain and trouble to them. Because they've not been able to sit down to align themselves to the spirit of God, to the voice of God, to the word of God. That any time their decision cause them too much, too much sorrow. Let me give you an example. I've had someone that has come to me. And this is their, the last time I talked to them, I told them, my friend, you are better off staying alone. Pastor, what do, you, what do you think? I said, this is your fifth time. Your fifth time. And I said, the reason is the moment you break up with someone, you are quick to make another decision. So you make decisions based on the voice of your emotions. Not the reality of what is happening. You've not assessed everything that is going on. Why am I getting into this relationship? Is it because I am emotionally bankrupt and I want someone to feed it? And I said, that is where you are making your decision from. But of course, she never liked me. <laughs> never liked me. No, 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 no. said, Pastor, thank you, but uh, I know where she went. Because I know when people talk to me afterwards, for if I have not seen or three, said them for two months, I know. I know why. Amen. Amen. But I have vowed to God, I will tell you the truth. Yeah. Amen. I've seen people that come to me, they, come to, they came to me and said, Pastor, this is the one the Lord said to me. I said, <laughs> the Lord spoke to you. I said, yes. There are two things as Pastor Harry did. If the Lord spoke to you, I said, please go and do likewise. Because that's my boss. Okay. Amen. Like, <laughs> the Lord is who? My boss. How do I overrule the decision of my boss? The Lord spoke to me, woman of God, go and do what he has said you are to do. But if you come and say, Pastor, I'm praying about this. What do you think? And I'll say, Lord, what do you think? Then, we will share wisdom. Amen. I don't know why someone, someone will be healed today. Because you see, when it comes to young people marrying, most of the time they struggle in relationship because they can't hear the voice. The, the voice of God. The voice of God. Especially in relationship. If you can pick the voice of God in your relationship, I'm telling you, you will go far. Hallelujah. May God give you his voice in your decision-making concerning relationship. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen people that were doing well until someone came into their life. Yesterday, we were driving somewhere on Friday. And then one of our daughters, one of the young people called. And, Elisonia, the kind of 
mindset this young girl is thinking now, it is because she met a man. And now, the way this young girl is thinking, you'll be shocked. And I said to myself, so everything you've learned from your childhood up until now, a guy can make you forget everything? But then again, it is the voice of who, what the guy has put in, his head, in her head. Are you getting what I'm saying? People of God, I'm not only talking about ladies, but most of the time, because the ladies that come to me, sometimes they cry. So I am a bit harsh on the ladies. But these things also happen to the men. I've seen men, they can't make right decisions. They like anything that moves. Wow. Say wow. <laughs> Let's move on. Since, since it seems like you are, you, are, you are not really listening to what I'm saying. Are you listening? Yes. If you're listening, say I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> There's also the voice of the mind. Your thought process and your reasoning are voices of your mind. The mind is one of the most wonderful gifts God has given to every person. And you must not send your mind on vacation because you have become spiritual. Amen. Amen. You, you must not send your mind on vacation because you have become spiritual. As a matter of fact, we must be the highest level of thinkers. Because the Bible says that for we have the mind of Christ. And if we have the mind of Christ, the inventors must come through us. The innovations must come through us. The new business ideas must come through the church. I believe the church, we are going back. Do you know the 21st century revival, Elder Ken? I was in prayer and the Lord said to me, the 21st century, the new revival that is coming, is going to come through the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers that will dominate the marketplace. Yes. And so we will have, like, like, like Khaled, I'm praying for you to become an amazing policy maker. I'm, pray, I'm praying for him because of the level of the way he thinks. Because of the way he thinks. I'm praying that you become an amazing policy maker. Because we need policy makers. People that will lobby the government and tell them that, that thing is not working. And by the promise, by the word of God, God must raise you. So your idea you think the ideas God is giving you is so that we can come and dance here? The dance is powerful. But so that we can go and contend with those out there. And because, do you think right now, if Bill Gates wake up in the morning and say every Thursday is for Bible study, do you think people will quit I, uh, IBM? No. no. Microsoft? No. Some of them, they will, they will mama, but they will be there. They will be there. They will complain, but majority will show up and do Bible study on Thursday. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you think if Trudeau wakes up right now and say every Friday afternoon Bible study at the Parliament Hill, guess what? They can talk as much as they want, but the Bible study will be done. So the 21st century revival, it will be people that are skillful anointed pastors but skillful, evangelists but skillful, life group leaders but skillful. That is why, please, I want you to rise up and master something because God is going to use it to bring many people to the kingdom. It's a voice, the voice of the mind. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. You're a, bit, you're a little bit quiet on me today. I said the voice of the mind is needed. To shape our generation. That's why we must not, no matter what your level is, your income, your, 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 your education, it's not the time to stop now. This is not the time. God wants to anoint. Take what is in your hand. Anoint it and shape a generation with it. Because can you imagine? This young man here was sharing a testimony with me as he works in the hospital and 
he went to one of the rooms and someone is lying down and the spirit of God said, ask if you can pray. And then calmly ask and the person said yes. And then he prayed, simple prayer. And the person said, whilst you were praying, something lifted off me. Kade gadabaya. Oh, mashakeda. Whilst you were praying, something lifted off me. Now, that's something medication can never treat it. You can fight it as much as you want. That's something. She doesn't know what that something is. But that is the spirit of infirmity behind what is making her lie there. You can't treat infirmity spirit with medication. Where? Because you were a pharmacist and now you're a doctor. Please, I need to know why medication, one medication for head has 14 or 20 other things. Have you asked that question before? When they do medication commercial, this is for your migraine. But please, you have blindness, you, you have migraine, you have stomach ache. And I'm saying, all I wanted was my head to, my headache to go. Now I'm going to get all these. You've never asked that question before? Oh, yeah. You are always, I'm like, <laughs> yes, maybe when you go home, listen to one of the medication commercials. It will tell you 25 other side effects and it will heal your headache. And, and this is, and this is what I'm, I like about it. The one that is saying it is smiling. You've not seen it? Oh man, I'm the only one or something. The, what, the guy is saying that you're going to get pass out, you lose your hearing, you lose your sight, all those things, he's laughing, smiling. Oh, you will lose your migraine, small migraine, small eyesight, you know, death. Hey! <laughs> I just wanted my headache to go. Now I stand at risk of death. But, you know, you know I, I decided to read it one day, and apparently the reason is that um, when they do the research and the studies, any symptoms that anyone experienced, if, even if it was one person, it has to be documented. So even if it was just one person that experienced that thing, out of the thousands of people that they did that research on, they have to document that it's a possible side effect. Because they don't know who's next, right? So may you not encounter those ones in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let, let me try it. Let me wrap up. Are you hearing something, though? In Romans chapter 4, verse 8, verse, Romans 8, 14, it says, For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God, or they are the sons of God. And I'm sharing with you, when you are led by the Spirit of God, the scripture says that they become the sons of God. The word sons there is a symbol of maturity. It's a symbol of maturity. So when you are led by the Spirit, it's telling us that you live in maturity. You live in maturity, spiritual maturity. And that is very, very necessary if you are going to really hear the voice of God you must be led by the Spirit. Amen. Of course, what are some of the voices that we can also hear? We talked about the voice of your spouses where we know. And then we deal with the voice of um, your will, the voice of your will. It is a very stubborn will. The voice of your will will contend with the will of God. The will of God is that I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Your will is stubborn. Your will doesn't want to do anything with God. So Jesus on the cross will say not, or before he will go to the cross will say, not my will, but your will be done. He needs to subdue his will to the will of God so that he can operate in hearing the voice of the Father. Amen. Now in this generation, I want to talk about the voice of social media. Wow. Say wow. The voice of what? Social media. Because we're dealing with practical things, right? Because everything is a voice. Please, the voice of social media is killing people. Of course, it may not kill us physically, but it is causing us unrealistic pressure. It's making you buy clothing you're not supposed to buy. It's making you spend. It's making you stay online. It's making you not appropriate your time properly. The voice of social media is becoming very strong in this generation, and we must learn to mute it. Amen. We must learn to manage it. We must learn to bring alignment to that voice because that voice is becoming very, very loud. 
And I'm telling you, just before or just because one, you don't like one doesn't mean one is not coming. When one is about to you know, become obsolete, another one will come. Because it's like a bait. It's a bait. And, and, and every people are falling into it. And the time needed to, to, to study and spend time with God and spend time in the presence of the Lord in prayer, in fasting, in reading, those times we're using it, spending on social media. And people are saying, but I'm using it to read. I still believe in physical books or your book online with your internet, what? Shut off. Wow. Pastor, but I'm reading it online. I, I know that, but most people, when you, when you are reading on your tablet, most of the time, the moment one like comes, it, 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 it messes you up. So you have to go and check that like again. Meanwhile, you've checked that like 14 times already. You get what I'm saying? Yes, you've checked that like 14 times already, and, 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 and one like that came, you go back, and the next you know, you, you, let me tell you something. You know confession is good for the soul. No, it's happened to me before. Amen. No, it's happened to me before. So you had to put measures in place where you just wanted to check something. Like I manage what I do. I manage it. There's time in what I watch and I do. What, but all you want to do, Elder David, is just watch one thing. And the next you know, there are things in your feed and then you go like this. You know, I was thinking about the present day generation and the kids. A kid comes from the womb and they can scroll. Like, like it's amazing. Six months kid and you can, you can, they can go like this. It's like a new anointing coming upon this generation. But you see, when you're scrolling, the next you know, things that feeds you are coming. The next you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 48, one hour. And the thing is getting sweeter. Two hours. Sweeter. Two and a half hours. Sweeter. Three. And people are becoming really like it's too much. It's too much. People of God, we need to also manage the voice of social media. And then the voice of uh, culture. The voice of our culture. Most of the time, the voice of your culture comes through your, your upbringing. And if you don't take care, that will can affect your future. Hallelujah. I conclude with this scripture. Genesis chapter 4 from verse 1. Going. The Bible says that now Adam knew Eve his wife and she conceived and bore Cain. And she said, I have given birth to a man with the help of Yahweh. Then she bore his brother Abel. And Abel became a keeper of sheep, and Cain became a tiller of ground. Verse 3, and in the course of time, Cain brought on an offering. Cain brought an offering from the fruit of the ground to Yahweh. And Abel also brought an offering from the choicest firstlings of his flock. And Yahweh looked with favor to Abel, to Abel and his offering, but to Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. And Cain became very angry, and his face fell. And Yahweh said to Cain, look at the, another chance being given to Cain. And Yahweh said to Cain, why are you angry? And why is your face fallen? Why is your face fallen? And Yahweh said to Cain, why are you angry? And why is your face fallen? Verse 7, if you do well, will I not accept you? But if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. And its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Verse 8, then Cain said to his brother, let us go out into the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Wow, Cain killed his brother Abel. Verse 9. It's my focus. Then Yahweh said to Cain, then Yahweh, then God said to Cain, where is Abel your brother? Where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Verse 10. And he said, and he said, 
what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And today I pray in the name of Jesus, any voice that is crying against your life, your future, your generation, your territory, our nation. We pray in the name of Jesus that the blood of Jesus will speak better things than the blood of any evil blood in the name of Jesus. Give him praise and give him glory. People of God, my point here is that blood has voice. Now let's go to Hebrew 12, 22 to 24. I read it quickly. Write it down just, and then listen to this. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and to the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, to the spirit of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator, to the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speak better things than the blood of Abel. Wow. In these two scriptures here, we see two blood speaking. The blood of Abel is speaking vengeance. The blood of Jesus is speaking salvation. The blood of Jesus is speaking mercy. The blood of Abel is speaking accusation. The blood of Jesus is speaking deliverance and forgiveness. The blood of Abel is saying, no, for what you have done to me and for what your family and your blood man has done, you must pay for it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible declares that blood always speaks. And when I was preparing, the Lord said to me, Come and tell my people, many of you, the blood of your generation is speaking against you. There is a voice that is contending against your success. It is contending against your health. It is contending against your marriage. It is contending against your future. It is contending against the things you did. Some of them you did it without knowing. Some of them you did it in your past. Some of them you did it when you were not born again. But it seems like that blood will not let you go because because the accuser of the brethren who accuses us day and night will not let you go when he see the speaking blood. Today I decree and declare, may the blood of Jesus speak on your behalf. May the blood of Jesus be the loudest voice against your generation. May the blood of Jesus speak for your healing, speak for your finances, speak for your marriage, speak for your health, speak for your destiny, speak for your children, speak for your church, speak for your community, speak for your nation. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus speak. You know, play something so we can go. <laughs> you know, there are some people, and I want to say this because it is a very sensitive topic, but because the Lord said as you share it, there are some that in their past, they had an abortion. And that blood is speaking. And as long as that blood is speaking, certain things will be hard. There are some, number two, that our ancestors, your mother, did something. Your daddy did something. Your uncles did something. Your, your, your bloodline, someone has done something and that blood is speaking. And until that blood is silenced, I'm telling you, things become very hard. Especially near success. It doesn't matter how long it takes. These blood, they can wait. Look at what the book of Lamentations says. I believe Lamentations 5. Seven. It says, our fathers have sinned and they are no more. And yet we bear the reproach of their iniquities. People of God, I want you to declare no more. No. Say it loud and clear, no more. no more. The blood of Jesus is speaking for me. Say, the blood of Jesus is speaking for me. My past will not speak against me. The blood of Jesus is speaking on my behalf. What he did on the cross is speaking for me. If my daddy did it, it was not I that did it. The cross is speaking for me. If my great-grandmother did it, it's not I that did it. And even if I did it, I've come to the blood of the cross. I've come to the cross and I'm saying, Lord, I blew it. I miss it. I need help. And the blood is saying, you are forgiven. 
you are saved. You are forgiven. You are saved. You are forgiven. Stand on your feet with me. We are going to pray. Please take the microphone. We are praying for three minutes. But I want you to pray. Any curse, any enchantment, any word, any voice that is invoked from your bloodline, that is pushing you, that is not making you fulfill and do what you are supposed to do. We are praying that in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus today has set you free. Watch this. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. But you see, the enemy only operate man of God in deception and accusation. So even though you are forgiven, it will mess your mind up. Remember your past. People of God, this is the solution. Anytime the enemy comes with a thought, please don't be quiet. Some of you, when the enemy comes, you allow guilt to hold you captive. When the devil brings that mindset of your past, you declare it's in the blood. Come on, somebody shout it's in the blood. It's in the blood. Shout it's in the blood. It's in the blood. Shout it's in the blood. It's in the blood. Declare it's in the blood. It's in the blood. Now lift your right hand. Shut the baraka. Declare me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the authority of the blood. By the authority of the blood. By the power of the cross. By the power of the cross. As I pray. As I pray. I am delivered. I am delivered. I activate. I activate. The voice. The voice. Of the blood. Of the Lamb. Of Jesus. Of Jesus. And I silence. And I silence. The voice. The voice. Of every sin. Of every sin. Every iniquity. Every iniquity. Every generational curse. They are silenced. As I clap and pray. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I, am delivered. I am delivered. I am free. I am free. Begin to pray. Thank you so much for joining us in our online stream. We know that God has visited you through his word. And we want you to know that we are here to serve you. If there's any questions or anything that you want us to serve you on, the information will be on your screen. And we want to also want you to like and subscribe and join us again when we are online. God bless you every Sunday at 11 online. And also you can watch both of our videos online here on our YouTube or Facebook or all social media platforms. The Lord bless you and thank you for joining us with our online experience. God bless you.